Hi, this is Tina from Tina's The Outsider, and today I'm at the Greenmead Historical Village and Park out in Livonia. I just went and saw my vocal doctor, and uh, I saw this in, uh, in museums, and it's a really neat looking house. It's the, the farm and everything is from the... Uh, 18, I think they said 1820, 1820s. So I'm gonna see how much it costs to get inside and I'll be able to walk around the whole complex. I'll show you what I'm talking about. It's really cool here. It's really pretty. All right, let's go. Okay, I just got out of the van. <clears throat> this is my first initial look at things. Alexander Blue House. Yeah. Looks like there's a long path down there. A couple paths. That's really neat. Mm. So yeah, let's go see if we can uh, go have a look-see. Okay, it says on the sign that Alexander Blue was born in New York on February 25th of 1817. And, uh, <clears throat> Alexander bought 80 acres of Mulvonia Township in 1835. He married Catherine Blue and they had three children, Macomb, Daniel, and Mary. Alexander held many township positions during his lifetime. He became Justice of the Peace in 1846 and held the position for 28 years. He was also the town supervisor for three years and postmaster of Elm in 1879. This two-story Italianate farmhouse was built in the 1850s. It was constructed of clapboard and had a stone foundation. There is a cur curvener cornice of verge board or gable trim along the eaves and porch columns. The home originally had 11 rooms. This building now serves as a park office on the upper level and rental space on the lower level. Here's the house. Okay, unfortunately, it's only open for like spring, summer, you know, so we're out of the season, so you can't go inside, but they said I can go walk around the park area, that it's free. So, let's go have a look, and I think I just went to their back door. <laughs> so, yeah, so I think I better walk back around. Yeah, so I walked up to their back door. This little walkway goes right to their side door. <laughs> Not a good idea, Tina. Okay. All right, let's go the right way this time. <laughs> That's the fun about exploring. You never know what you're gonna get. <laughs> and they said it's a uh, when they do do their tours. Um, it's by donation so you can donate whatever you want. It's a little muddy, but that's okay. So yeah, if you're new to my channel, thank you for watching. Appreciate it. If you could subscribe and press the like button.
and comment down below if you're new or old or enjoy this kind of stuff. Let me know. Little gazebo over there. Real nice church. Schoolhouse. Can remind you of Greenfield Village. We're in Livonia, Michigan. Yeah. If you're not from here. I'm in Livonia, Michigan right now. Off of Haggerty. Uh, it's a real pretty church. Looks like they have a little grocery store. A little house. Let's go over here. Since I'm closer. The bungalow. It was built in 1913, moved in moved 1979, and it opened in 92. Okay, so according to the city records, it was built in 1913. The Gear family lived in it. Um, for a short time, I op operated the store next door. The first two floors had rooms, a living room, and a kitchen. One of the one is on the west side and the other is on the north side. Between 1905 and 1925, many bungalows were built in Detroit. The house features large porches, and second-story dormers were very popular. Hmm. So yeah, that's all. Oh, yeah, that's like a two-story bungalow in Southwest Detroit. <clears throat> yeah, this building is a part of the Newburgh intersection so yeah so a lot of so this is like a kit house during the 1900s bungalow style homes were available to order through a mail catalog wow from several companies including Alden Homes of Bay City Lewis Liberty Kit Homes of Bay City Sterling Kit Homes of Bay City Sears Roebuck of Chicago and Montgomery Wards Chicago. Montgomery Ward was from Chicago too. All materials and blueprints would be sent via train, car, or boat to the buyer. Wow. This bungalow was originally located on Ann Arbor Trail just west of Newburgh in Section 31. Wow. Okay. And that's what it originally looked like. That's pretty cool. That's Battleship Gray on the stairs and the porch. They use that everywhere. Uh, yeah, they use that everywhere. Uh, they have a little built-in shed. I never saw a built-in shed before. That's pretty cool. You know, looks like a built-in back porch. You can tell that this was an add-on. And an add-on with the little shed. That's kind of cute. Cool. Cool. Cute. Cool. Cute. Whatever you want to call it. <laughs> that battleship gray was everywhere. <laughs> <sighs> yeah. That's pretty cool. Uh, okay. So this right here was the store that these people ran. Oh, there's somebody in the store. There's a person in the store. They're probably wondering what I'm doing. <laughs> probably. Uh. That's so what this little building. Uh, they have a lot of little buildings back here. Uh, let's see. Twenty-five dollar reward for any information and conviction of any person defacing or damaging this building in any way. Oh, this was a train station. 
Yeah. So this is their little makeshift train station that they're replicating. Okay, let's go see what the sign says about it. Uh -huh. This was the Detroit United Railway waiting room built in the 1900s, moved 1976. So in 1897, the construction of an interurban line was proposed between Wayne, Plymouth, and Northville. The inter interurban began serving the Newburgh area in 1909. The line ran between Wayne and Northville, making stops at Newburgh and Plymouth. Several types of cars were used on the line. The track turned at the corner of Ann Arbor Trail in Newburgh in 1912 when it was moved to curve behind the LJ, LJ Gear Store. This improvement rounded the curve to prevent car derailments. The DUR went bankrupt in 1925 and the service ended in 1927. So yeah, they went bankrupt. Yeah, the DUR sat in despair for years before being purchased by the Historical Society. Along the trolley line, Phoenix Tunnel between Northville and Plymouth. Wow. This building is a part of the Newburgh intersection. Wow, okay. So, that's the Detroit United Railway. Wow. And they went bankrupt in 1925 and the service ended in 27. 1927. Wow. I didn't know all that, did you? I didn't. <laughs> Okay, so this was the AJ Gear store. It was built in 1908 and it moved in 1976 and it opened in 82. 1982. Okay, Alan L. Gear was born on February 10th of 82 in Howell Township and came with his parents to Plymouth about 1905. Uh, he married Hattie Bassett on September 7th of 1905. And they had two sons, Stanley and Irving. The Gear family lived in the bungalow next door while operating the store. Okay, the Al Gear store opened on December 21st, 1912, and sold groceries, dry goods, and hardware. It was operated by Alan Gear until 1916, and then it was sold to C.R. Carson. He operated the store until 1922, and then sold it to Charles Trombley, who operated the store until 26. The store was in a state of despair when acquired by the Historical Society. This is the front of a postcard sent January 23rd of 1922 to Long Beach, California. Wow, look at how cute. A unique feature, the dimensions of this building was 20 by 40 by 45 with one side of wall being longer than the other. The front of the store faced Ann Arbor Trail, but the building was built parallel to Newburgh Road. Wow. Let's go see if I can get a picture of it. Road's a little muddy. A little. <laughs> a lot. Dry goods, hardware, and groceries. There's somebody in there, though. <sighs> we'll go to the church and everything on the way out. Oh, there's just so many. That's like a schoolhouse over there. That's a long walk. Maybe I should go back over here. <laughs> okay. Alright, so this was the Newburgh Church. 
and it was built in 1848 and moved here in 1977 and opened in 1984. And in 1848, on land leased from Joseph Kingsley across from the Newburgh Cemetery, this church was built as a Presbyterian meeting house. After construction, the Presbyterians and Congregationalists shared usage alternating services weekly. In the early 1880s, the building was used as a Congressional Church in 88. The Congressional and Methodist congregations merged and renamed the church Newburgh Methodist Church. The Belfry was added in 1892 and the Sunday School Wig, Wing, the Wing was added in 1889. In 1902, the pews and stained glass windows still in the church today were installed. Wow, so in 1889, other stained glass windows were installed. And in 1915, the church was moved a half mile west from its original site to the northwest corner of Newburgh and Ann Arbor Trail in an effort to increase the congregational size. It was placed on skids and pulled by horses. Wow. The vestibule was also the vestibule was also was enlarged and the bell tower was rebuilt. The bell tower was rebuilt in 1948. Wow. This photograph was taken in 1910. A double door was added to the front of the church in the 1890s to allow for a casket to be carried through it. Wow, check that out. 1889 was the stained glass windows and the pews came into it. And the double doors were added so they could have funeral sessions. Okay, I'm back in the car. It's only 38 degrees outside and I'm pretty frozen. So there's a whole bunch more buildings back there, but I think I'm gonna leave those buildings for the springtime. And maybe we can actually see inside of this place more. But yeah, I just wanted to come here and take a look. I saw that it looked pretty interesting and everybody's been giving such great reviews to it. So I wanted to be nosy, like I always am. Uh, like I always am. <laughs> like I don't like me, you know. That's what I do. <laughs> and so far this is only by donation and you can walk the grounds. You can walk it for free. So, yeah. So I'm going to leave this for right now. I'm going to leave and head on back to my area and relax a little bit. Uh, or play DoorDash. But yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this little um, video of this place. It looks really cool. Like I said, this is just going to be part one. So yeah. Alright, I will talk with you guys later. If you can, like, subscribe. All that good stuff. Today is, what, Wednesday? Yeah. I don't know the date. It's, oh, the 7th. Today is February the 7th. Yeah. February the 7th. Okay, you guys have a good day. Talk with you later.